We're on a Tuesday tonight. We should have been on a Monday. But. Had a bit of a day at the house. We did. So, Thanksgiving was this past weekend. And um, we had our own Thanksgiving dinner. Sarah did and most of it. And she did great. She did it after just getting a root canal, which was cool, too. Which um, is impressive. I mean, I, I did stuffing and dishes. And she did everything else. Um, so we had Thanksgiving, but the pets didn't have it. So Sarah, on she picks up that they make pet food. If you're not in America, this is so weird. They make pet food, holiday pet food. They make I thanks. actually got the cats, the fancy feast advent calendar. <laughs> well, the thing exists. They make Thanksgiving in the in a can for, yeah. for pets. And we gave Loki his, and it was no problem. Because it just, you know, it was in the bowl, and then it was gone. Like, like that. It's amazing. Magic. Grady, on the other hand, Grady has his entire life, this this cat, has grown up on dry food. He just, since he was a kid. Um, the can was wet food, but I'm like, he does tuna sometimes, and he should be yeah. fine with this. So I, I gave it to him, and he was interested for a little bit. He took a few bites, and he was at it for a few minutes, and then he just left it. And we're like, okay. Well, then along comes the next day, Monday. I'm not feeling well. My head's killing me. So I'm I'm laying down. Sarah stops home middle of the day around lunch from work. And as she's about to leave, she notices Loki is paying a lot of attention to something in the hallway. Which is always a concern with pets. And he's licking the floor. Also always a concern. So, and folks, if you're a little squicked, you might want to move ahead. But if you're a parent or a pet owner, none of this is, is bugging you at all. Um, so apparently the Thanksgiving did not agree with Grady. He's, he, he had, he, he, he offered it up for a return. He wanted it to go back. He, he, he offered a return up. Loki attempted to process his return. Um... Though he was not the manager, so he shouldn't have done that. No. And, um... So we have one puking, and the other one with the runs, because of this one puking. It is this... And I have, and I have a monster headache in the middle of it all. Kind of like the least expected version of Two Girls, One Cup. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, and as Sarah is mentioning, part of why we were concerned is because Loki, he can, on the best of days, he can wither plants with his anus. But on Monday, he let loose a weapon of mass destruction. Oh, dear. Just the this, this smell. It was just this ball of gas that kept expanding and didn't stop. I'm like in the back, like trying to fend it off with the Febreze, like the power of Christ compels you. The power <laughs> of Christ compels you. It it did. It, it, it's it's that. And yeah, the thing, we, uh, all the cats got turkey flavored wet food for dinner. Mm. Ours get dry food and they get wet food at dinner time and mm. like. Once every two weeks, Simba will decide to eat some wet food, but mostly it's just the girls. And of course, Houdini goes nuts for wet food. Um, so yeah, they got some turkey flavored wet food, and that was about the size of it. We and Dan the... made a ridiculous amount of Dan made dinner for six when there was like two of us. Yeah, we were talking about that. We we miss have it. We like when both Sarah and I, when we were younger, we have like Thanksgivings like twenty. Thanksgiving was done for twenty people or and shit. You know that much food. Yeah. And that meant that there would be leftovers for like two weeks. Yeah, there'd be maybe turkey every day. And cranberry sauce sandwiches for like a week almost. And when you're just two of us, when we're just cooking for each other, there's like a day of leftovers and that's it. And it's, it's kind of sad. It's a little sad. They made a frightening amount of food <laughs> for two people, um, which has been lovely because, like I said, I've been having my Thanksgiving sandwiches every day <laughs> and mashed potatoes at two in the morning. We need to do a whole turkey one year. I I, I need to do it. I'm not going to put it off once. If I want a whole turkey, I'm going to have to sit down. Did you see the video that went viral of the the sweet potato turkey? 
No. Oh my god. I think it was Chef Club. They took this turkey and the turkey looked like it had already gone like 12 rounds within <laughs> the whole field. Like the turkey literally had bruises. <laughs> then like they are shoving whole sweet potatoes in this in the turkey in the porniest way possible. <laughs> like this was like turkey by kink.com. <laughs> Literally whole, like they just peeled them and are ramming them in there. Very upsetting. Then they took marshmallows and shoved marshmallows under the turkey skin. Why? Uh. I know. And that wasn't even the end of it. Then they made like a crust out of whatever you call it in a food processor, pecans and flour and butter. And they put the whole turkey in a crust. Like it had just gone through the Terrigen mist on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. <laughs> like the UN should be involved. They candied the turkey. Yes. A candy. After, after they violated it. <laughs> like what was done to that turkey was a war crime. Ah, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving in America is one of those things. Uh, all right. Well, with that in mind, it's time to get to the nonsense. And it's very different this year. We'll talk about that in a second. Because uh, it's, 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 a, it's a very different uh, atmosphere out there. Let's see. Intro, please. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little something we like to call "What the fuck is wrong with you?" And so, every year we've been doing this show for years and years. This time of year means the aftermath of Black Friday. We, we, it's it's just been kind of a thing because every year on Black Friday. American, games. Americans lose their absolute minds. This year, there was no Black Friday, really. There was Black Just Friday me. month. I was very worried about what it was going to look like. Yeah, th this year there was there was like one little tiny incident in Florida, of course, Fort Myers, Florida, where a GameStop was selling PS5s. And it was like the running of the bulls a little bit, yeah. but nobody got into people like slipped and fell, but nobody got into fights. Most of the places I saw the malls, like it looked like an average Saturday at a mall. Yeah, it was which is still busier than you'd like to be in a pandemic, but, but not Jen, your usual Black Friday hell. However, so yeah, this year we're not really having the, the atrocities, but there was, of course, and maybe it'll just maybe we'll all realize as a country that we never fucking needed it. Oh God, I hope so. I hope. Like, well, wouldn't it be nice if this was the thing that made us all be like, "Why were we doing that?" Exactly. Let's just not do it anymore. However, we still had something that of note, I would say, and of course, it was fucking Florida. Just one thing, but it was a thing. You can always um, count on Florida. Florida Walmart evacuated, evacuate, evacuated after Black Friday parking lot fire. A Walmart in Brooksville, Florida was evacuated just minutes after opening its doors on Black Friday after tractor trailers in the store's parking lot burst into flame. The blaze began just after 5 a.m. in a tractor trailer near the Cortez Boulevard store. A deputy who was already stationed at the superstore heard an explosion at the western end of the facility. After rushing the scene and checking the three parked tractor trailers for people, deputy is able to help the only occupants to safety. The fire then spread to two neighboring trailers. The store, which was evacuated, has since reopened after fire crews were attempting to extinguish the blaze. Nobody was injured. The sheriff's office says it was still working to determine the cause. I We know what happened. We know what happened here. Someone the deals were just too hot. No, someone attempted a distraction. Someone motherfucking thought if I cause an explosion over there, I'll be the only one in the store. But you won't. 
Because they'll make you leave too. They'll make, yeah, this was the, you, you know that was this idea. For one thing, it's fucking Florida. For another, it's Walmart. You know that was how someone thought this. But like someone was in that truck. Yeah, they're fine, fortunately, but good God. Or at least in one of the trucks. Yeah, in case you don't know, if you're not, well, I don't know, probably in other countries too. Well, if you have no experience with the tractor trailer, they're typically little, like, apartments. Like, there's yeah. up front, you drive, and then in the back, when you have to stop, like, in the middle of a long haul across the country, there's, like, a little sleeping area, and there's, like, you know, you, you live back there. Um, so someone is probably asleep in his fucking truck, and kablooey! Happy Thanksgiving. But yeah, some some motherfucker was trying to be slick. All for like a TV at $50 off. They probably spent that much on making the explosive. Fuck's sake. Uh, well, let's it, that that was the only really Black Friday thing, but that's not the only really stupid thing. This one Oh, the schadenfreude. It is delicious. It goes well with uh, whipped cream and um, pumpkin pie. It's it's a good after after Thanksgiving, some, some good old-fashioned schadenfreude. Hackensack board member who opposed LGBTQ curriculum resigns after embarrassing Zoom incident. Oh, wow. This one definitely has the look of... Mm-hmm. Like the Fellowship of the Sun on True Blood. She she has she has the the I would like to speak to your manager hairstyle going on. So I would like to speak to your manager about Jesus because you wish me happy holidays and not Merry Christmas. Hackensax, uh Francis uh Kojelia, uh, Kojela, I think it's Kojela. Uh, didn't realize that she what? Uh, that would be my guess. What? Kojelja. Kojelja, but I think the J is Kojelia. Or, or, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Uh, she didn't realize she'd left her laptop camera on when she took it with her going to the bathroom during the public comment section of a school board meeting. Nearly 150 participants, including students, apparently saw her relief herself. The next slide is gold. No one immediately said anything when she returned from her trip to the toilet. <laughs> that is like, I, that is, you have created an aura of awkwardness that cannot be penetrated. No one knows how to proceed. They just watched you. I don't you understand how people don't know this by now. Like, we've all been living in fucking video calls for almost a year. Right. There's kind of no excuse to not understand how it works anymore. Right. Like, ever, like, seriously, everyone just watched you poop. What do you say? Yeah. Like, I mean, damn. A short time later, Vice President Scott James Vickery reportedly told her, you need to go. We were trying to get work done while you're sitting on the toilet. I mean, if you have to go, you have to go. Just shut the camera off or just step away from the computer. Like if you miss a couple of questions, nobody's going to die. I just I love how the, a terrible person just it came back and she's she's now out of the way of doing the terrible things yeah, because of I her own stupidity. Yeah. Why take the laptop to the bathroom? I know. Right. Right. Who or if you really that? don't want to miss anything, leave it outside the door. I'll take turn I, it to face the other way. I will, in fact, take my phone to the bathroom. It is the the blessing of the modern age that you have a, a a portable computer that you can take with you in your pocket somewhere. I will sit on the toilet. I will fucking read uh, uh, news stories. I will read Washington Post on the toilet. I mean, people used to use fucking newspapers. It's the same yeah. deal. However, a laptop? Who's got a laptop? Well, I know, you know, I'm saying that, and I'm probably pretty sure since the, the invention of the laptop, motherfuckers been taking them to the bathroom with them. Also, another video like this went viral right at the end, right at the beginning of lockdown. 
But like then everyone was kind of new to using Zoom <laughs> for work. Now we're a year in. Right. There's kind of no excuse for this anymore. Like for fuck's sake, just leave it. Just leave the laptop. Come back. Yeah. If you miss a couple of, like, you can let another board member know, I have to step away for a minute. This will blow your mind. What would you do if the meeting was in person? If, like, seriously, right? Would you be like, okay, everybody, come with me to the restroom. I don't want to miss anything. Like, if you were sitting in a board meeting and you had to go, what would you do? Everybody, you proceed to the bathroom in an orderly manner. Or I have to poop. The person next to you, I have to use the ladies' room. Can you let me know what I missed? You know, I even I'm sitting here thinking this is not hard. Even I'm sitting here thinking of a a, a technological solution. You can get one of them fucking Bluetooth thingies, the earphone thingies, and connect it to your your fucking computer and walk to the bat and you're still connected, you're still hearing everything. It's you're not missing just Jesus Christ. This is not this is not a difficult problem. No, it's not. And yet. And yet. Mm Also, like, clearly she's never worked retail because you learn how to just hold it for, like, eight hours. Right. (sighs) This next one is, I don't quite understand. This is kind of spooky and yet stupid at the same time. This This is a giant mystery about a giant dick. German police investigate after giant phallic monument Vanishes. Ooh. German police. Maybe it just got cold out. <laughs> I mean that. an investigation into the disappearance of a large wooden sculpture of a phallus from a mountainside where it appeared without explanation several years ago. And he just left it there? The two meter tall, seven foot sculpture, seven foot penis appeared to have been chopped down over the weekend. Um, the homage to male genitalia had gained celebrity status in recent years as a destination for hikers. It even appeared on Google Maps where it was classified as a, quote, cultural monument. (laughs) Local lore has it that it was made as a prank birthday gift for a young man whose family didn't appreciate the gift. So the 440-pound sculpture was hauled up the mountain and left there. Because that's the obvious solution. Recent weeks, the sculpture... Obviously, if someone gives you a giant dick that weighs 400 pounds and your family doesn't like it, what you're going to do is haul it up a mountain. (laughs) Recent weeks, the sculpture has enjoyed uh, mixed fortunes being knocked down and then put up again. You're never going to keep it down. But also having a beer dedicated to it by the local brewery. Oh, it did have a cider drink. Yeah. Does it have a whiskey drink? <laughs> <laughs> Does it have a- German news agency DPA reported the police in the uh, Bavarian town of Kempton are investigating this appearance. Though it wasn't clear whether a crime had been committed. The owner of the sculpture is unknown. Like, okay, it this is weird. You, somebody dumped a giant dick, and everybody was like, this is our giant dick, and then it went away. You know, maybe it maybe it just maybe went away. Maybe the real giant dick was the friends we met along the way. My complaint is Utah and Romania just got boring metal obelisks. <laughs> And Germany gets a giant dick. Giant dick, yeah. That seems unfair. And it, I, maybe it went home. Maybe <laughs> off. <laughs> I have to go now. No. My planet needs me. So, I've mentioned before the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy porn parody that I don't even remember why I watched, but of course I did. 
the Groot character is actually a seven foot wooden phallus named Groin. So that might be the answer. Like, maybe okay. this was an alien life form. <laughs> no. That just went <clears throat> Moving along. Australia for this next one. Um, points for originality. Points subtracted for stupidity. Man allegedly caught on building site pretended to be a statue when police officers arrived. Man allegedly caught snooping around a building site was accused of trying to pretend he was a statue when police arrived at the scene. Patrols were called uh, just before 3.30 a.m. Thursday morning after a security company reported a person walking around inside with a flashlight. When officers arrived, they cordoned off the area and called in a patrol dog. The man, a 29-year-old from Seton, was arrested and charged with being unlawfully on the premises. Um, the uh, dog searched the site, locating a man inside one of the apartments pretending to be a statue. That's a new one. Yeah. It's, it's like, how, like... He tried. <laughs> like, he's fucking cornered, all right? I, I, I kind of get this one. He is cornered. He has nothing to lose. Yeah. It, let's go. Classic park route, park route and hope that if you don't move, <laughs> they can't see you. <laughs> but just, I mean, there's like maybe a one in one million chance of this actually fooling anyone. But you have nothing else to lose. I've developed the ability to stand so still <laughs> that I become completely invisible. <laughs> You're eating a Zarg nut. <laughs> uh, checks revealed he had an outstanding court warrant and he was refused police bail. Yeah, that's that. I mean, like. In the places. <laughs> send that guy. Freeze! Way ahead of you. <laughs> at least he didn't get naked okay that's a point at least he you know he he wasn't trying to be a michelangelo's david so that that uh, it i you know at least he, you tried bless your heart you tried an, an, an attempt was made you this get, <sighs> you get a blue star not gold <laughs> This is also an attempt was made, though I don't, I don't know what they were attempting. This is from Pennsylvania. Man in stolen SUV runs out of gas, calls police for help. Oh, honey. Honey, no. The Allegheny County man is in a Blair County prison after state police say he called for help after running out of gas in a stolen SUV. Daniel M. Rizza, 20, of uh, McKeesport, called state police and asked for assistance after running out of gas in a gray Audi. Um, but was when he was told a trooper was responding, he said he didn't want an officer before hanging up. Yeah, could, could so you send some... What did you want? He wanted, like, state-sponsored AAA, I guess. Yeah, could you send someone out with some gasoline? Wait, no, not the police. Oh, no. Wow, oh, no. Like, so have that. like, Connecticut has that. They have just DOT trucks to just troll the highways looking for people with problems. I know that because my car overheated on I-84 and a very nice man in a DOT truck helped me, but... Rizzo was on Route 22 and parked in the state gate on state game land. Uh, when police were on their way, a game warden arrived. The trooper also learned uh, as he drove to where Rizzo was parked that a gray Audi had been reported stolen. State police noticed uh, Rizzo was out of the uh, vehicle and talking to the game warden when he arrived and checked uh, a check of the SUV's make, model, vehicle identification number, and registration confirmed it was stolen. Rizzo was charged by the state police with a felony count of receiving stolen property. Like, my dude. 
Like, I really don't know what you expected. Like, right. You called. You are you are in the middle of crime. Yeah. You are doing crime. Generally, you want to not call the police mm -hmm. while you're criming. Right. They are the people who stop the crime. You are doing a crime. You you are matter and you are calling up antimatter to come and get yeah. hang out. Things you didn't think you'd had to write down. <laughs> Don't call the cops while you're criming. Don't call the cops while you're committing a crime. They're not going to be like, oh, we understand. Okay. We'll just yeah. keep this between us. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What the fuck? <laughs> Sir, just go to the local gas station. No, you're going to yell at me. <laughs> And if you want somebody who doesn't give a fuck, the gas station probably didn't give a fuck. I mean, they're not paid enough to give a fuck. Yeah, can you send someone? We're, we'll send an officer. What did you think they were going to send? A drone? <laughs> Maybe. Did you think they were good? They were just. They were going to go out carrying a gas can. Do you think it was it was going to be like a Saint Bernard with a gas can tied around his neck or some shit? He's so cute. <laughs> if AAA just had like dog service. If you call the police, the police go come. That's yeah. how that works. Uh, and finally, this is another one where I don't. Something is missing here because I don't understand how this was supposed to work. This is from South Carolina, too, so I'm <clears throat> doubly ashamed. Hampton County. Bond set for driver who set car on fire during police chase. While Bond, he was in. Bond has been set for the driver who was arrested for lighting the inside of his car on fire during a vehicle chase. The MSC Police Department says Juan Laura Orozco, 59. Uh, had his bond set for $22,000 Saturday night. They say he'd been charged with arson, assault, and battery of a high and aggravated nature, failing to stop for a blue light uh, with body injury, improper parking. <laughs> Sometimes I love these lists of... We get to one like improper parking and resisting arrest. Um, police department say Officer Laura Osborne was released uh, in stable condition. Her injuries were non-life-threatening and consistent with being knocked down by an open car door. So, you know, um, so, uh, the incident started when police received a call from Hampton County 911 to check on a car that was reportedly driving against the flow of traffic. That's always a red flag. Just to let you know. According to police, officers attempted to speak with Roscoe, who refused to roll down the windows or leave the vehicle. A report states that for a few minutes, he began pouring alcohol in the inside of the car and attempted to ignite a lighter. Officers say they broke the window, and when they opened the door, Orozco put the car into reverse, struck the officer. He then traveled northbound on I-95. As officers were in pursuit, he lit the interior of the car on fire once he got to Collington County, which resulted in a crash. They captured him, secured the area, and fire rescue was re arrived on scene to extinguish the car. What was the goal? What was the fucking plan? Because if you're not getting out of the car... Right! And you're going to set the car on fire. What you're going to do is die. Yeah, I mean, that's that's like if you set the rolling tank of explosives on fire, it explodes. If you are in it, you explode. Yes, that's science. Did you think they were going to get scared and go away? <laughs> What do you think it's like? It was like a puffer fish or some shit, <laughs> like, <laughs> making himself oh, more threatening. Fire. We better go. I'm fucking crazy, man. Don't come near me. I'll light myself on fire. I'll light this car on fire. That's that's not gonna. They're not. They're think that's a hell of a bluff, dude. That's not gonna make them pay less attention to you. I mean, you've already been driving on the wrong side of the fucking road. Yeah. They're going to have issues with you. Yeah. And if you, you know, once you've set the car, once you've set the fire, they kind of have an obligation to make sure it gets put out. You can't just drive around with a car on fire. 
No. It's it's not it's not socially acceptable to drive around with flames shooting out of your windows. Once again, we are not at Fury Road just yet. Not just yet. Ugh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, James Shear, this is not GTA. You won't respawn at the hospital if you blow up your car. No. Like that's what <clears throat> concerns me. Like, what the fuck was your plan? I, I don't get it. There's like, there's something missing here. Yeah. There's there's like, we got from A to B. I mean, we got from A to C. Where's B? Where the this fuck is, like is B? Comic where the guy has like a whole bunch of complex math on a chalkboard. And then it says, and then a miracle happens. <laughs> We're missing that vital component of the equation. What the fuck happened? A wizard did it. What the fuck? Oh uh, yeah. Oh, and and before we uh, before we we end out tonight, uh, before we get to what we learned this week, it is the it is it is time yet again. Prepare yourself because it has begun. Where is it? Come on over here. Put it on the screen. It is time. And now our watch begins. Goat watch! The Yavla goat has been erected. The large straw goat. Which has, for some unspeakable reason, every year in Sweden, Yavla erects this giant straw goat. They have every holiday year for decades now, since 1966. And what's very notable about it is more often than not, someone has burned the fucking goat to the ground. It is this weird thing. It's not meant to be burned out. You think it's a large straw goat. It There's only one thing it's really going to be good at. And yet, no, that's not what it's for. It has become a war of cat and mouse of people who want to keep the goat in one piece and other people who want to burn it. Now, for the last four years, it has survived. 2017, 18, 19, 20, it has actually made it all the way through to when it was supposed to be um, taken down, the, the normal date. Coincidentally, the last four years when it has not been burned to the ground, the entire world has gone loco. Kind of sucked, yeah. Now, I'm not typically a superstitious man. But on the other hand, burn the fucker down, what could it hurt? <laughs> Why take chances? <laughs> no. Let's hedge our bets a little bit here. What? You just can't be too careful. <laughs> Seriously, so we're gonna we're gonna pay we're gonna check in on the goat for here now past Christmas into January, at, into the new year, and watch and hope and pray that some enterprising team of commandos takes it upon themselves to save us all. Can we call the A team for that? Dude, I would watch that Christmas special. Like, <laughs> motherfucker, I'd be all over that shit. Versus the goat? Like, go oh yeah, fuck yeah. Would it be, like, George Popwell A-Team or Liam Neeson A-Team? George Popwell, come on. I never saw the movie, so I don't know if it yeah. was any good. Oh yeah, that that's something to keep in mind. That's coming up in the next few weeks. The Goat Watch. Has our, now our watch begins... Um, so yeah, what did we learn this week? We learned setting the car on fire while you're in it is not the escape plan I think you were going for. Not, not going to work out. No. no. Um, we've learned that when you attempt crime, do not call the people whose job it is to make you not crime. You generally want to avoid them as much as possible. In the process of your criming. I mean, that's just, that is just, that's just fucking, that's just fucking math, man. 
Um, we've learned that when the chips are down, you can try anything. It's just probably not going to work. Yeah. Like, also, cops, their 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 vision is not based on motion. You know why the fuck not try it? Um, as well, we've learned that sometimes a giant penis will come into your life, and then sometimes it'll leave. That's just how things go. Ain't that the truth? You just appreciate the time you had with the giant penis. That's all you can do. Penis giveth and penis taketh <clears throat> away. We've learned that Jesus Christ, go take the fucking live streaming laptop into the bathroom. Where have you been for the past 10 months? There really just is no excuse for it at this point. And finally, we've learned that if you were attempting to get those Black Friday deals, um, a distraction that is also an explosion, not the best strategy. You said it before. Fire is almost never the answer to your problem. Almost? Almost. almost. Whoever stole it was a cock goblin. Mm. <laughs> now I'm picturing like the guy from Hellboy 2 that had to walk them into the Golden Army. Now I'm picturing that guy dragging his little cart. <laughs> Missing it and walking away. <laughs> I don't think he was a goblin. I forget what they called him, but uh, it was a dwarf. Uh, Whatever. That's what's in my head now. A good old game of cocks and robbers. Oh. <laughs>